Hi everyone, Stanislaw here. This tutorial is all about using the MSmoke 4K from Motion VFX. Since MSmoke 4K is a collection of elements, it can be used in many different editing and compositing systems. There are 50 different high quality 4K smoke elements to choose from. Once your purchase and download is complete, start with importing the MSmoke 4K elements into the library. In this first example, we have a scene with a gentleman smoking and I'd like to add more smoke and edit to add to the atmosphere. To import the MSmoke 4K elements, use keyboard shortcut Command-I, or click the Import button in the menu. Choose the elements you'd like to add to your library. I'm selecting all of them by clicking the topmost item, scrolling to the bottom of the list, holding Shift, and left-clicking the last item. When importing, be aware of your library workflow. If we know which we'll be using, then we can copy just the few ones to our library and keep it portable. If using msmoke elements in different projects, it may be better to create a separate event for these compositing elements. This will make them accessible across different projects in your library. It's typically better to move the sources to an external drive and just link them to Final Cut Pro instead of copying the large file sizes into the library. Click Import to add these to your library. Once imported, Drag and drop one of the elements into your timeline. Adjust its duration if necessary to best fit your scene. With your MSmoke element added and selected in your timeline, navigate to the inspector. Within the inspector, you can change basic transformations and blend modes of your clip to help your composite. In this example, I'll choose an additive blend mode. There are times when another blend mode, such as screen, which we'll use later, may be more effective. Experiment with the different modes to find out what works best for you and your project. That's a little too much for me, so I'll adjust the opacity and take it down to 25%. It's possible to add multiple elements to the same scene to give it a greater impact. I have a second element I'd like to add to the bottom area of this scene. Just as before, I'll drag and drop it onto my timeline as a connected clip. I'll adjust my clip duration, then navigate to my inspector. And this time, I'll adjust the position of the Y coordinate to move the element to the bottom of the screen. Change the blend mode once again, that's all there is to it. As a final step for this example, adjusting the color of this smoke element will create a much more believable composite for our edit. Typically, most scenes will have some color to them and the white smoke will seem out of place. To adjust for this, I'll select the clip and open the color adjustments. I'll adjust the color of the highlights and add just a little green to these elements. Wasn't that easy? In this second example, we're gonna tackle something just a bit more challenging. I've opened a clip in Apple Motion. In this scene, we have a moving camera. Adding the smoke elements to the scene will work as normally, but due to the movement of the camera, it doesn't look quite right. Let's start with a fresh project. I'm working in a 1080p timeline currently, and that's important because I will be using the 4K footage and resizing it to better fit the composites. I'll start by importing two MSmoke 4K elements into Apple Motion. Just like in Final Cut Pro, I can use the shortcut Command-I or click the import item to bring them in. The two elements I've brought in consist of an atmospheric element and a blowing element. Once inside my project, I like to organize these into groups to make them easier to work with. I'll start by reviewing my items by turning the visibility on and off, just to better see which is which. With the element I'll use as the atmosphere, I'll rename this group Atmosphere and just turn it off for right now. With the other item, my director tells me I need blowing smoke from the ceiling, so I'll group and rename that item Ceiling. Let's turn that one off for the time being too. With my atmosphere element selected, I'll change the blend mode to Screen. Next, Let's apply a match move behavior from the library. I'll select Library, Behaviors, Motion Tracking, and Match Move. 
I'll click and drag the behavior onto my group. The match move behavior will allow me to track the movement of one clip feature and apply that information to the transformation of another clip. To access the controls, I'll head back to the inspector. I'll leave all these controls as default, and I'll use the crosshairs to select an area of high contrast as possible. Once selected, click Analyze to run through the tracking process. Depending on your footage, your results may vary. For best results, make sure you have a high contrast area of luminance if possible. In tough situations, you may need to adjust your track manually. By the way, I'm applying this to the group instead of the clip so I can freely drop in additional items in the group and the tracking will work with any element I place into it without the need for additional tracking. How cool is that? Now that the smoke element is following the footage, I'll head back to the inspector and adjust my scale properties to better cover the scene. For this specific example, I'll change the scale of the clip to 55%. Please note that these adjustments are unique to this example, and your adjustments will likely be different. I'm happy with that layer, so I'll disable it for right now, and let's move on to that ceiling smoke layer. I'll activate it, and change the blend mode to screen again. I'll apply the match move behavior, just as the previous group. For this next track, I'll use this area near the ceiling tile, as it has high contrast, and there's nothing intersecting it. Analyze from the start of the clip forward. Once complete, the element will match our scene once more. It's a little hard to see, so I'll disable this main clip while I set this piece up. Using the position and rotation controls, I'll point this so it has an effect of coming from the ceiling. I'll adjust the rotation on the Y axis to negative 180 and the Z axis to 270 degrees and the scale to 80%. I'll add a Gaussian blur to this ceiling clip just to soften the smoke. I think I'll change the amount to about 27. The last finishing touch will be to stylize and better merge these clips. Let's take these two composite elements and group them both. I'll call this group Final Touches. I'll change the blend mode to Screen. Back in the library, I'll add a colorize effect to tint our elements to the scene. I'll remap this white and change it to a bit of a soft teal. I have the color already in the swatch preset for this example, but a quick way to get a comparable color for your scene is to use the color picker and choose a value from the clip itself. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. Back to the library once more for a variable blur filter. Adding a variable blur can help tie these composites to the background just a bit more. Because we're adding these effects to the groups, it'll affect the entirety of the group contents. I'll use the controls to change the inner and outer radius to complete the composite. I'll review once more, and now I'm ready for export. That's all for this lesson. For more awesome Final Cut Pro templates and plugins, please visit motionvfx.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.